Hello and welcome to another deck tech video for another singleton deck for the uh, War of the Spark Chronicles Part 3 Storm the Citadel event. We have another deck here where every non-land card in the deck exists as a one of. You'll notice that I've swapped sides in terms of my face for this video compared to the mono green one I uploaded a uh, while ago. Um, it's because this deck's curve is a very short one. Stops at 4 mana and like mono green which went all the way to 8. So we do have some slightly bigger columns here. Uh, unlike the mono green deck as well, this deck is most certainly an aggro deck if you couldn't tell from the sheer number of one drops we've got going on. So Dauntless Bodyguard, Hazda Marshall, Healer's Hawk, Witness, Enforcer, Watchdog. Watchdog's an interesting one, can't attack on its own, but it does make our creatures indestructible and just puts a body on the board. Falcon, Panther, again just in this deck to be a 1-2 body that costs 1, we want to be very aggressive. Grim Initiate, Rigging Runner. Then you have Moment of Triumph and Sheltering Light as 2-1 mana tricks, just to kind of mess up combat in the deck's favour. Adanto Vanguard starts our 2 drops, a very powerful 2 drop, it's held its own in standard. Uh, Bishop Shoulder, Bishop's, Bishop's Soldier, sorry about that mispronunciation. Bishop's Soldier, however, say that 3 times fast, uh, is more of a limited card, seen some play in the Magic the Gathering Arena Pauper events. 2-2 lifelink, it's serviceable, it's a creature, it's what the deck wants. We have Concordia Pegasus, again, 1-3 for 2, not phenomenal on its own, but with other bodies on the board in combination with Anthem effects like Trumpet Blast, uh, like Make a Stand, um, it really can get damage through. Daybreak Chaplain, again, it's a 1-3. Martyr of Dusk, quite a powerful 2-drop in that it's a 2-1 on its own, and then when it dies you get another counter which the deck is looking for, another creature. Pouncing Lynx has first strike while attacking. Skyblade is kind of Concordia Pegasus number two. Remember, we are playing Singleton. Fiashino Pyromancer, two damage to your opponent. Staple and Mono Red decks in standard right now. Adamant Will, powerful trick, making a creature indestructible. If your opponent's trying to kill your creature, you've got a Knight's Pledge on with some expensive removal. You can Adamant Will get extra damage through, save that creature, save the enchantment, avoid a potential two for one. Speak of the Devil, Knight's Pledge, plus two plus two for two mana. Stick it on a creature. May that creature larger, you can attack through other creatures, you can just push through for more damage. Tormenting Voice, just in case you draw too many lands, but the deck is only playing 20 in the 60 cards. The three drop column, this is where the deck is most card dense. You have Kinjali's Sunwing, your opponent's creatures entering the battlefield tap means they can't block. Mentor of the Meek will draw cards when your smaller creatures come into play, especially something like Heroic Reinforcements. If you have flooded slightly, you can get a lot of value back by paying the one mana drawing some cards. Militia Bugler. Again, most of the creatures in this deck are small enough to be hit by it. A 2-3 body for 3 is okay in the deck in its own right, just because it's attacker. You have Pegasus Corsa and Trusted Pegasus and Rock Charger, all kind of letting you attack with your creatures, making them fly to get in the damage if your opponent does start mounting a ground defense. Uncrop Invader I had a lot of fun with in the Pauper event, um, and here you'll have creatures to sacrifice to it. First Strike can make attacks favorable. You can kind of go all in if an opponent lets it through. Uh, Legion Warboss might be a more um, familiar creature to a lot of you watching the video. It's seeing a lot of play in standard, whether main deck or sideboard. It can create a lot of pressure on an opponent very quickly, especially if you can attack the Warboss in itself to get those mentor counters onto the goblins. Skylight Nidula, it's been a Boros staple since the original Ravnica block. 2 2 Flying Haste lets you get the damage through. Here's an upgrade from Borosso, Feather the Redeemed, she's a 3-4. If you target her with something like Moment of Triumph, Adamant Will, you do get a bit of value there, but mostly she's just in the deck as a 3-4 for 3, and that's what we're doing. Make a stand, your creatures are indestructible, and it pumps your team as well. So if you do have a lot of small creatures, they're going to survive something like a potential sweeper, like a targeted removal spell, and also push through some extra damage. History of Banalia, Mono White. Uh, staple in standard at the moment. You get two knights for your money, you get a miniature pump there as well. Burn Bright, Trumpet Blast, uh, effectively functional reprints of one another, although Trumpet Blast kind of awkward if you play it during an opponent's attack, uh, whereas Burn Bright does not. Um, and Tybalt, Rakish Instigator, does everything you want, really stops your opponent's gaining life, makes more creatures for you to attack with, and makes two creatures assuming you get to minus twice, which combo well with Burn Bright, Trumpet Blast, and they're effectively something like a Footlight Fiend, and that when those tokens die, you also get to shoot something for one, whether that's your opponent or finishing off a potential blocker, that's up to you, but in either case, it's additional value off these tokens. Then the only fours in the deck, you have a Jani, Adversary of Tyrants, putting the counters on your creatures, 
gets them bigger. You get to spread out the value as well to make your opponent's targeted removal worse. And the minus two has some real options in terms of what it can get back as well. The emblem is a potential outcome of playing this card, but not really something we're angling towards. We're more looking to leverage the first two abilities if the game does go slightly later. And heroic reinforcements. Uh, powerful sorcery when it was in the M19 limited format. Seems powerful in context, in context given this deck. You're going to make two soldier tokens. You're going to buff your whole team. Those soldiers get to come in as two twos with haste immediately. And anything else you've got going on as well is going to get a buff to really let them get in, get into combat with your opponent. Like we said, 20 lands. Uh, they're split between 18 basics, 13 planes, 5 mountains. And then the two kind of good um, red, white, dual lands in Clifftop Retreat and Sacred Foundry. We don't want anything coming into play tapped when we have so many one drops in the deck every land drop really matters we don't have the time to play something like a boros guildgate that's coming into play tapped we really want to get cards cast get opponent dead and if you're looking to get 15 wins quickly i assume this deck would be a place that you'd want to be so in a moment we'll play a game with the deck we'll see how it fares against a live opponent see if we can get that win um but my experience of the format so far it is limited it's only been an hour 25 minutes that i've been playing but it does feel quite mid-rangey, quite controlly, quite grindy. I assume a deck as low to the ground as this is going to get some wins just from opponents stumbling from their mana base being quite slow. So I'm looking forward to the game. So we'll see those in a moment. Okay, so let's get into some gameplay with the red-white aggro deck, the Boros Singleton aggro deck. We're queued up, going to find an opponent. Let's see what happens. Looks like an interesting deck. Very aggressive, very low to the ground. Um, should be a bit of a change from the mono green deck we played a moment ago. Um, interested to see how it works out, especially in singleton as a format. I haven't really had a chance to play it much before. Suigun, Suigun is our opponent, Suigune. So this is an interesting hand, definitely keeping it. Would like a third land, but we have a curve for now, one into two, in terms of bodyguard Marta. Uh, we'll pass turn. Not really going to sacrifice anything. Does opponent have a one? They do not. My turn. What do we draw? Okay, so we have Burn Bright. Here's Martyr of Dusk. Can't imagine an opponent can interact, so we'll go for that F6 value. Don't want to sacrifice my... No. Oh dear. Oh dear. I seem to have lost the ability to attack without triggering at my bodyguard and sacrificing itself. Okay, let's see what opponent has. If they play... Ooh, opponent is not just mono green. They are... Green and white Selesnia colours. My turn, untapping. We don't draw the land we're looking for. Um, I'm going to put Knight's Pledge on the Martyr, though. I don't think there's much the opponent can do in response would make this a problem. So we will get in for 6. Straight in for 6. Opponent's on 12. They're untapping now. Going into their turn 3, they know we missed a land drop. We have a lot of pressure in play. Opponent's Bant. So that could be interesting. Okay, so Sacred Foundry. Um, hmm. Well, we definitely get in for the attack first. If we're going to cast Adamant Will, we don't have to shock in. So we'll just make this attack as is. Okay, opponent still has nothing. Um, I don't think there's any four mana wraths we're really vulnerable to. Settle the Wreckage could be a problem if opponent has it. Um, but I think we will just make Mentor of the Meek and pass. See what happens. Maybe opponent interacts, maybe they have a counter spell. No, it resolves. Let's see what happens. Passing turn. What do we have? What do we have? So opponent's reading Mentor of the Meek. Woodland Cemetery, a four color special. Same colors of the uh, Commander Dreadhorde deck. Okay, so we have Maker Stand. So the only card I would be worried about here is Settle the Wreckage. But we're playing Singleton, so let's see what happens. Let's see what happens all in. What do you have, opponent? Statue targeting Martyr of Dusk. We'll make a stand. We make a stand. We have 11 power. That's 11 damage to our opponent, and they explode. So that was a powerful game with the deck. Uh, we didn't draw very many lands. We didn't need very many lands. Three is the perfect point for this deck to stop. And with the right mix of creatures and pump spells, our opponent died in very short order. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that quick bit of gameplay. I suppose if it's a short game, it gives you more chance to jump onto Arena, try the deck out for yourself. The deck list is in the description below. You can copy it, import it directly into Arena. If you like the video you just watched, please click subscribe. 
Uh, you'll find a link to my Twitch channel in the description as well below. Thank you very much for watching.